I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 197 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. In this episode, we're reading the New Testament book of Acts chapter 10 with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Romeo y Julieta 1875 Nicaragua in the Toro 6x50 Batola. So let's go to the Altidus USA website who distributes the Romeo y Julieta and see what they have to say. This incredible Romeo selection is a robust Nicaraguan puro that exudes the classic complexity of the original best selling 1875 cigar. The Romeo y Julieta 1875 Nicaragua is dubbed with the bold and zesty hints of Nicaraguan tobaccos, which modern connoisseurs have come to appreciate. The cigars come handcrafted by Placencia Cigars S.A. within their renowned Nicaraguan factory, showcasing a lush medley of sweet, spicy, and earthy Placencia tobaccos. The Romeo y Julieta 1875 Nicaragua is adorned with vibrant orange bands, which perfectly complement the cigar's refined medium brown wrapper. Rich, robust, and entirely satisfying, the Romeo y Julieta 1875 Nicaragua is a spicy treat with the strength to spare for any adult cigar enthusiast looking for a full-flavored cigar. With impeccable construction and unprecedented Placencia quality, this exquisite Nicaraguan puro promises to distinguish itself as a modern-day classic for all cigar connoisseurs and introduces an exceptional profile of contemporary flavor to the myriad of Romeo y Julieta faithful across the globe. And the wrappers, binders, and fillers, all Nicaraguan, and the Vitolas are the Toro, 6x52, Pyramide, 6 and an eighth by 52 and the Bully Grande, 5x54. That is the Romeo y Julieta, 1875, Nicaragua. So let's get into our reading of Acts chapter 10. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and verse 1. At Caesarea there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort. A devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. 
He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him, and having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And Spurgeon comments on verse 14. No, Lord, Peter said, for I have never eaten anything impure and ritually unclean. This is a curious expression. If Peter had said no, there would have been a clear consistency in his language and tone. But no, Lord is an odd jumble of self-will and reverence, of pride and humility, of contradiction and devotion. Surely when you say no, it ought not to be said to the Lord. And if you say Lord, you ought not to put side by side the word no. Peter always was a blunderer in his early days, and he had not grown out of his old habits of honest impetuosity. He meant well, and his expression was not intended to convey all that we might easily make of it. At any rate, it is not for us to condemn him. Who are we that we should sit in judgment on another saint of God? We are not without fault ourselves. And continuing in verse 15. And the voice came to him again a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. Now while Peter was inwardly perplexed as to what the vision that he had seen might mean, behold, the men who were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Simon's house, stood at the gate, and called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was lodging there. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. Rise and go down, and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who was well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So he invited them in to be his guests. The next day he rose and went away with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on the following day they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them, and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with them, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit any one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked then why you sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa, and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner, by the sea. So I sent for you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. 
Now therefore we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And Spurgeon comments on verses 42 and 43. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify. These two verses are an extract from a remarkable sermon, a sermon Peter preached in the house of Cornelius. What did Peter preach? There were six heads in his sermon, though he spoke only of one subject, that is, Christ. The apostle spoke first of the Lord's person. He is Lord of all. Verse 36. Peter is clear on the sovereign Godhead of Jesus. Having, having spoken of his person, Peter then spoke of his life, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Verse 38. This was the spring of Jesus' life power his anointing from the Holy Spirit. Peter set out the tenor of Jesus' life in the next sentence. He went about doing good and healing. Then Peter moved on to his third point, which was the Savior's death. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. Verse 39. Peter does not take away the offense of the cross or put it in smooth language. Then Peter passed on to the Lord's resurrection, for that is an essential part of the gospel. God raised up this man on the third day and caused him to be seen. Verse 40. It was no fiction. He was openly shown on many occasions to those best able to recognize him. Verse 41. Then Peter came to the judgment which he felt it necessary to preach, declaring that Jesus Christ who died and rose again, is now designated the judge of all mankind. Verse 42. And lastly, Peter preached salvation by the Lord Jesus most fully and graciously when he said, Through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Verse 43. This was what Peter was driving at. And when he had reached this point, Enough truth of God had been taught to save a soul, and God, the Holy Spirit, at once used it. And picking back up in verse 44, While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. That's the end of this episode. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, 
as well as today's cigar, also Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals, Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless, and the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. If you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.